It was last Thursday night that Diver Street, a Catholic pocket just west of the city centre, was set alight. That night, five people were killed and 120 injured in machine gun battles between police and gunmen. A stunned Belfast woke up to scars reminiscent of the Blitz, only more sinister and more horrible. This time, there was no common enemy and fear was of the unknown. All morning, they prepared for battle. Buses were commandeered, lorries were hijacked, barricades of flagstones and furniture were thrown together. And you men know perfectly well that the future is at stake in this community as in a way that it was never at stake before. But at Diver Street, no one was listening. After lunch, the shots rang out again. Gangs of youths, armed with petrol bombs and bricks, faced one another across the barricades. Houses were set ablaze in a wave of riot and arson. Scores of churches of all denominations, Methodist, Presbyterian, Church of Ireland, and many others were open. All day Friday and Saturday, the evacuees from the Catholic ghettos on the Falls and Ardoin went north to Andersonstown. There, six church halls and schools were mobilized for the emergency. Two and a half thousand people, most of them children, left the smoldering streets for the safety of a home without terror. What have you asked the Prime Minister to do? I've asked the Prime Minister, uh, on behalf of the people here, to send in troops today. Because the people here are in a state of absolute panic. What sort of reception do you think the troops would get in this district? Oh, excellent. The people are asking me, for God's sake, all over the place, are, are the troops coming in? They're dying for them. They have confidence in the troops. Throughout the night, sniping became the tactic to, became the tactic of the rioters. Driving through the deserted falls area this morning, I, I heard the staccato burst of machine gun fire. As we drove past a side street, three men on the corner dived for cover. A young man with a revolver asked us for a lift. At four this morning, RUC turned us back from the falls area. Snipers, they said, were still at work, and in the distance, one heard the ominous burst of machine gun fire. The scene terrified me, but it reminded an American colleague of Harlem. But he added, it seems easier to get guns here. Dawn over Belfast today showed a grim scene. Buildings scarred by fire, thousands of pounds worth of damage caused, and of course the tragic loss of life. It's been a night of shame for Belfast, one that will live on in the memories of its people for a very long time. And as they go in to survey the damage this morning, all you see have not ruled out the possibility of finding more victims of this horrible night of violence. And now, with a comment on the, on the general situation, here's Martin Wallace. Last night has been described as the worst flare-up in the streets since the 1920s, and obviously the Stormont government must take new action to prevent a repetition tonight. The Cabinet Security Committee met during the night, and a full Cabinet meeting is expected later today. There are certain to be consultations with the British government. The likeliest move is to bring troops into Belfast in the, in the hope of avoiding further clashes between rioters and police, particularly the B-Specials. Another 600 troops will be available this afternoon when men of the 3rd Battalion of the Light Infantry fly in from Plymouth to plug the gap left by the use of troops in Derry. A curfew is another possibility which is being widely mentioned. This is Martin Wallace, RTE Belfast. <laughs>